Hey guys, welcome to Surf Show and Tell. I'm Noel Salas and today's surfboard review is on a new construction called Varial Foam. We're taking a Varial Foam board and a polyurethane board and we're going into the, into the analytics and data with Trace GPS. So we took the sampler, which is a small wave high performance board, which is actually my favorite board, and we've done it in the same construction. We've got two different types of foam, but we have the same polyester resin. We have a four ounce S cloth on the deck, and then we have a four ounce E cloth on the bottom, right? So 5.7 is a stock dims, 5.7 by 19 by two and five sixteenths. Liters of volume is 26.7. I'm five foot nine and 165 pounds. Sit back and enjoy the show. So the crew and I went on a little road trip to Ventura, California, where Varial Foam headquarters is, to talk with the founders. So I'm here with Edison Connor, and he's going to go into the technicals of the foam. So tell us what, what's the science behind Varial? Yeah, thanks, Noel. So Varial Foam was adapted from the aerospace industry to make parts such as helicopter rotor blade cores and uh, ultralight spacecraft parts. And the science behind it is that it's an extremely rigid material. And what that means for a core is that it it doesn't affect the overall flex of the board in bending or twisting, but what it does is it supports the skins extremely well, the board, and it also allows the surfer to put more energy into flexing the board and to receive more of that energy back at the end of their turn. Uh, the easiest way to describe the importance of rigidity, or the technical term for that is modulus, is that this is a skin that was peeled off of a surfboard, and you can see how thin the fiberglass skin is. So when you're pulling on it, it's extremely strong. When you push on it, it just wants to bend, and that's a buckle. And so the, one of the purposes of the core of a surfboard is to prevent the, the skin from buckling. And the effectiveness with, with which it can do that is determined by the rigidity of it. So varial foam is seven times as rigid as polyurethane or EPS foam. And it's a lot lighter too, it's about 30% lighter. So what that means, especially when you use it throughout the entire board is that you are supporting the skins to their theoretical strength without letting them buckle. Hmm. And so by doing that, you make the board as strong as it could possibly be for the glassing that you're using. But at the same time, the magic of it is that you're not changing the flex because the glassing will determine the flex with varial foam. The rigidity of the core almost exactly compensates for the lack of a wooden stringer. So you're getting the same flex pattern out of the core but you're really controlling that with the skins. And that's what allows us to work with surfers that ride big waves like Shane Dorian, and also surfers that are aerialists like Italo Ferreira. Uh, so we're able to actually dial this technology in uh, with the skins that we, we recommend to the shaper. So maybe you can go into a little bit more of the performance side of it because you use the word rigidity. And for me, that word reminds me of stiff or firm or unflexible. So maybe you could break that down for me a little bit. Yeah, that's a great point. And that's why the adaptation of varial foam to surfboards was a little counterintuitive because a lot of surfers think they want everything to be flexible and fluid. And the key is, is that varial foam does not affect the overall flex of the board in bending and twisting. What it does, which it turns out is actually really beneficial to the performance of the board, is it increases the rigidity through the deck of the board. Mm. And so when you go to do a turn, you're pushing on the board, you want that board to flex, to match the contour of the wave, and then you want to get all that energy from the flex board kick back at you at the end, end of the turn. Well, what's working against you in a normal PU board is how soft the core is. And so when you go into the turn, and we've modeled this in the computer, most of what you're doing is just pushing the foam in under your foot. Even if you're not pressure dinging it, you're squishing the foam way down. And that's just eating up your energy. And so by putting a very high modulus, rigid core in there, you can still get the same flex, but you can flex it that much more. Mm -hmm. And then it's because the skins of the board store energy so much better than the soft, squishy core that is polyurethane, it's able to store all that energy from your turn and actually release that back to you, kind of like a bow unloading when you fire off a bow and arrow. Mm. So can you tell me a little bit about, you know, it's an extra added cost, quite a bit, a couple hundred bucks, mm -hmm. right, on the foam. So what are the extra added bonus high level view on that extra cost that can go right to the consumer and be a big deal? Okay, yeah, that's a great question. So 
By adapting this advanced aerospace material, which is highly engineered and expensive to manufacture, we've been able to create boards that are faster, lighter, stronger, more responsive, they don't lose their pop, and the foam will never yellow. So you really get much more value for your money, both in terms of your surfing experience and how long you'll have that board in your quiver and how long you'll love riding it for. So let's talk about speed and Trace's ability to give us the analytics that we need. We're gonna go for, we're gonna talk about max speed and we're gonna talk about average speed. Max speed would be three days of gathering data and it's taking your top waves from every session, right? Max speed went to the PU, right? Now to my surprise, when we did the average speed, we took all the waves and then we took the average and the PU was faster by 5%. And what I think is interesting is that both boards felt, felt really fast under my feet and even watching the footage, I couldn't tell which one looked faster. Another thing Trace did that I thought was really cool was it was telling us the speed in and out of turns. So on cutbacks, it gives us a speed and then coming out of bottom turns, it gives us speed. So on bottom turn speed, they were the same. On cutback speed, the varial foam was faster. Now, it did feel more buoyant under my feet and it also is lighter. So those could be two key factors to why it was faster in my cutbacks. So let's talk about the weight real quick. Both of them are team light. They both have the same glass job, but they came in at different weights. So the varial foam came in at four pounds, 85 ounces, and the PU came in at five pounds, seven ounces. So that's roughly four and a half percent difference in weight. And I think it's super important when you're working on small waves and you're trying to generate lots of speed, I do think that you want the board to be super light and responsive. So let's talk a little bit about durability. Since we use such a light glass, the durability is really important because on small waves we're pushing really hard to generate speed. So we've got pretty good, pretty good pressure dents here. I rode this board uh, more out of both between this and the PU. So let's look at the PU real quick. And the PU, we've got pretty good pressure dents also, but I've pretty much crushed you know, the whole front side here where my front foot goes. And um, I'd say that the varial foam is more durable. It looks like maybe 25, 30%. It's a closed cell foam. So if the board were to get a ding, the part that is exposed will be the only parts in this closed cell foam that will take in water. The rest will not. And that will help with a quick ding repair and getting back in the water because you don't have to wait a super long time for it to dry out. So that's really good. The other thing is, we all know, or if you don't know, if you take um, this board, they claim it won't delaminate. So the lamination is the skin, and this right here where my pressure dent is, if you leave it in a hot car, this begins to separate from the foam, and that's called delamination, and that's cancer to a surfboard. While we ran that test, and I put it in the car, and to be honest with you, I was really scared. I was nervous because I liked the board. And when I put it in there and pulled it out, it was a 90 plus degree day. I left it in there all day, pulled it out like six o'clock at night, no problem. So I ran that test and it will not delam. Well guys, in wrapping up the review, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm a big fan of Varial, the Varial foam. It felt really good under my feet. It did take a big getting used to, but I really liked it. I wanna give a special shout out thanks to the folks at Trace for giving us all the analytics. In one day of shooting, they gave me 13 pages of data. I thought stuff would bore us and it'd be too long to get into, but it's groundbreaking. I, I also wanna say good job to the folks at Varial for bringing something innovative and new. I, I believe in it. it, it feels really good under my feet. So all in all, I thought the review and the foam was great. I hope you guys enjoyed the review and I hope you enjoyed the surfing. Follow me on Instagram to stay up on what's going on at Surf Show and Tell. Take care, bye-bye.
yeah, we really wanted to create a blank that uh, is really consistent and produces a repeatable board. So we have a uniform density throughout the entire blank. There's no variance in density, no soft centers. And what that does is it gives a shaper a consistent base to build on to uh, refine their shapes, dial in the glassing. You can make it you know, really light glassing for high performance. You can weight the glassing down and add weight. Um, you can also play with the flex if you know the core is going to be repeatable and the exact same each time. Hmm. So we've really wanted to take away all the variables that come with a, a typical core, uh, foam core, and produce something that is highly repeatable and uh, really close uh, board to board.